What makes the fact objective? While some things are harder to quantify than others, many would agree that an empirical measurement, such as the length of a material object, can be considered as a clear example of a fact that can be used to guide action. However, when dealing with complex systems, things aren't so simple. Take the case of the coastline of Britain. If we ask the captain of a large ship, measuring the length of the coastline with a nautical chart, they will tell us that it is a certain length. Ask a bus driver and they may give us a measure that is more than twice what the captain said. Who is right, the bus driver who measured the coastline based on their fuel consumption or the captain using a nautical chart to predict the duration of their journey? If you ask a person who walks on the beach every day, they might tell you that the length of the coastline is not given, as it depends on the tide. This is to say, we can't measure the length of a complex object that has different meanings and identities across different scales. When we quantify something, we quantify a definition of that thing, and not the thing itself. This may all seem very abstract, but it is incredibly relevant for science advice to policy. Consider a complex sustainability challenge, such as the need to reduce emissions. Different actors, viewing the problem from different scales, will measure things differently and use different measurements to guide their actions. This doesn't mean that we should stop acting because there is no universal truth. What it means is that when providing scientific evidence to guide policy, for example building targets or indicators, we have to also take into account which perspective is being considered, at what scale and for what purpose, and which perspectives are being left aside in the process.